Boo! All right, let's quit munching around and get some uh, serious chess instruction videos going on here. Welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. We're here having fun. We are in including all of Bobby Fisherman's tournament games that he ever played. And this one is versus Madness. And Madness throws a Sicilian at Bobby. Let's see how Bobby, typical Sicilian, right? Let's see how Bobby handles this. Again, at this point, he is still only 13 years old. I haven't gotten the book yet to where it says he's 14, so I'm assuming all these games under the 13th year means that he's 13 years old. I mean, this is called Genius, genius Caliber. <clears throat> okay, let's get back onto it. D4 instantly. C takes the D4, but of course, we are after all in the Sicilian, right? Knight takes D4. Knight comes to F6, of course, and Knight to C3. It's all typical Sicilian at this point. G6, of course, he wants to feed in Keto. Bishop to E3. Bishop to g7. Yeah, we are marching on. f3, solidifying his central pawn. He's going to castle and tuck away the king. He's going to bring his queen up to d2 so that he can potentially castle here. And then bishop e6. Well, <laughs> how interesting. Uh, the typical, the real continuation, I mean, if you're going to do the normal opening is to bring the knight out, of course, right, with the Sicilian. So maybe he's just trying to change it up so that it'll be a different play. And Bobby says, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and try this. Now this does open up the partial open file for the rook eventually down the road, if that comes into play, just so you know, because he was able to retake with the f-pawn. Bobby will continue developing to c4. Queen's going to come over, and then Bobby's going to drop down to b3. This was one of his habits, and, and I say habit, I mean, you know, advisedly, but it was a, a wonderful way for him to get his bishop out and not constantly be bombarded by pawns to bump it back to the b3. He liked to do that in several of the, his games, as we will see, we will see him doing this. And now his knight is on the move. It's time to tuck the king far away, and now the knight to f4. So, we can see a readily lined up groups to confront the center. Right? This is like those medieval battles. Everyone's gotten their place places ready. Okay, now let's begin. And here comes the first thrust. D5. Knight is going to take E6 right now, however. Very interesting. The queen will take the knight. And the E will take the D5. Nice little E pawn fork there, right? But the knight will take the d5, of course. You can see that one coming. Bishop will take the d5. So we're having a major confrontation in the center with a major trade down. Queen will simply come up to e5. You got the fork with the bishop, and the bishop is going to go ahead and take the knight. Now, Something kind of cool here happens. Can you see what you do? Kind of fun on this part. There is an intermezzo mood. Move. <laughs> Duh. An intermezzo move before he takes that bishop. I mean, yeah, you can take the bishop. But there's kind of a cool little move first you want to do. Can you see it? It's little things like this that uh, 
I mean, it's just what makes chess exciting for us, all right? It's very interesting. So, notice, he's got the B-pawn. And now Bobby is forced to address, or rather react, to that. Kind of a nice little in-between, in-zwischen, in-between move. And now, he takes the c6. Now, it's kind of interesting here. If you're looking at the board, are you looking at that board? Of course you are. If black were to say, hey, wait a minute, look at that. That's not bad, is it? I mean, pinning the queen to the king in an absolute pin. Why didn't black do that move? That just plays right into white's hands. So black doesn't want to do that. That'll just give white a chance to trade down and go into a draw, right? You don't want to do that. So instead, he properly took the c6. Yeah. Okay, now... Now we have Bishop goes to d4. Bobby makes the bishop move. This is how it works out best for, well, it, it does good for either one of them though. And then of course you've got the check. Yeah, yeah, now you can see the trade down. Absolutely. No more check, but no more queens. And Bobby's got an open file. And, again, the basic rule, right? There's no reason to let your opponent have an easy central open file if you don't need to. Really seriously. That's, that's what you want to do when you see that phenomenal open file, which is absolutely a pillar of every chess game you need to be playing. Keep in mind open files. Bobby does not change on his because that will give his opponent the open file. Right? So he goes to here. Of course, then his opponent can get the open file anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah. But he does, he makes his opponent trade him down on his end. He's happier with that. Now the rook will come to f5 instead of worrying about that file. Because the rook wants to get out there into the center of the of the board because now that it's the end game and the rooks are basically the only pieces on there, he wants to maximize his power. Yeah? Here is good but it doesn't maximize nearly as much as here, and he keeps his eye on the pawn. I, I know, yeah, he's not going to take the pawn, of course not, but he keeps his eye on it. So, this is a better move, and now, Bobby, of course, you got to bring your rook back in. Absolutely. And now, rook d5 check. Centralization. See, even in the end game, and I mean, we're clearly in the end game. What's the first thing his opponent does? He runs to the center. Attack from the center. Yeah, how many games do we see that happening? Pretty much everyone. Yeah, so king hides behind the pawn, of course, and now e5. Again, centralization. Nimzovich is smiling in his grave when he saw this played. This is correct. What do you do to the pawns? Block eight them. Notice, both of them go right to the center. I'm not exaggerating that. I'm simply pointing out that in the real good chess games, this is what you really will see. So that means for us to improve our chess, aha, that's the way we want to try to play. Nice, simple, sweet, easy to understand. It doesn't take a PhD in chessology to figure this out. And guess what? End game, here come the kings. Get the king in the game. The king is a fighting piece, man.
I say that almost every video because in Endgame, the really good players show us how to turn the king into a fighting piece. And the best way is get him up into this game. He doesn't really technically have to hide any longer. Look, he's got an island that he can hide behind once he gets up here, right? So, really, it's not like he's going to get checkmated, but don't leave him back there doing nothing. No, bring him out here. Man, a king can escort his pawns in. The king is a very powerful piece in the end game, so always use him. Great stuff here. Look at this. Target! Yeah, baby! That's a Jeremy Selman and a Arthur Yusupov concept. Target. Touch the pawn. Well, I mean, of course, he's not going to let Fisher take it. Watch what Fisher does now. Blink. Target! Yeah, baby! Now he's got two targets. Nice. Well, of course. His opponent can guard those two targets, and you want to in an end game. Just one lost pawn can be fatal. So, and you say, well, I see Bobby basically taking the initiative and all. Somewhat, yes, at this point he's calling the shots. Uh, really, truly, that isn't where his opponent wants to put the rook, but that is exactly where his opponent had better put the rook for the time being. So this is great end-game strategy chess we're seeing. This is fun stuff. This is great to know what do you do with your rooks. <laughs> you know, this is what to do with your rooks. And here come the king. Next play. Notice uh, he, they've got their rooks activated. Bob B is on offense, more or less, and uh, his opponent, Medness, is on defense. But then, don't push your pawns yet. Not yet. Put your king into the game. I, every end game we see, I'm going to be saying that because that's what we're going to be seeing. <laughs> So that means that's what we want to do. I, you know, I'm not trying to be redundant. I'm just saying, look, here's what the good chess players do. Let's try to emulate them. Put your king into the game. That cannot be overemphasized. And I rest my case. King F6, yeah. King E3. Oh, what, did I, what did I say? Check it out. End game, put the king in there. Absolutely. Now they begin to do something called the opposition, and this is really important, and one of the best chapters, well, two or three of the best chapters I've ever seen on this, both of them are in both of Jeremy Silman's books. Ah, let's see, how to reassess your chess, fourth edition, third edition, I can't really remember which one, third Third edition. The fourth one is his big one, the Reassess Your Chess Third Edition. Very, very important book. He's got an entire chapter on opposition of the kings, and then in his endgame course, he's got opposition. You really need to know this for endgame, right? So we see this is exactly what they're doing. Very properly so. And I, look how Bobby's playing. Block the pawn and get opposition. And, and basically, essentially, the opposition says you prevent the opponent's king from coming after your pawns. Because he moved over here. Now, black here is not in opposition. Bobby moving here puts him in opposition. Kings on same color squares prevents this king from coming through to get the pawns. That's called opposition. I, I'm somewhat simplifying it on purpose, yes, but it prevents the king from moving forward. All black can do now is move to the side or move backward. You don't, no, you don't want to move backward. So opposition, Bobby has the opposition. In the center, and it's a sweet extra cherry on top that he happens to be blocking the central pawn. 
That is an isolated pond though, so that's easy to blockade. And really, black is not going to push... Um, I, I don't think black's going to push that big of a deal to protect that pawn. Ultimately, I don't think he will. And now, uh, Bobby came to e4. King e3, king e6. Oh, I lied, man. Bobby came to e4, and he came to king d6. No, yeah, he came up to blockade, and then he goes to king to d6. And now... Bobby goes to rook to a3. Because he's not going to move his king forward like that. He's just not going to do that, no. Uh-uh. No, let the rook... The rook belongs behind pass pawns. Now, it's not a pass pawn, but the rook belongs, belongs behind the pass pawn to push the pawn in. Not the king in front of the pawn to escort the pawn in. Right, so it's you're not going to see him do that. So Bobby didn't worry about, uh, well, he can't go there. He did, Bobby didn't worry about going here. Now, if he had, though, if they were going to play the opposition, now, not here, here, because then black takes the opposition. Now he prevents white from moving forward. So... But yeah, Bobby doesn't have to worry about that, so he brings his rook back down, and rook b7. And now rook b3. They're in the end game, and they're going to take it to kings versus pawns, and in a king versus pawns game, and it's pawns on both sides. So this makes it extra complex. We're going to see some great end game material here. But they do want to trade down to get to that issue. And he does. The other advantage that Bobby wants is he wants to connect his two pawns. Now his pawns are connected and his opponent's pawns are separated. And his main pawn is blockaded. And these two are against a pawn majority of three. So at this point... Bobby's opponent, Medness, has to play careful. You can make mistakes. Now, see, at this point, so many of us will say, hey, you want to draw? Yeah, sure, let's go on. Whoa, wait, wait. In an end game, there are so many more ways for your opponent to make one bad move and give you the game. So, every opportunity you get try to play through the end game truly because th these are some of the toughest kinds to play especially with pawns on both sides so this is going to be awesome this is going to be cool rook takes b3 a takes b3 c5 here we go okay yeah yeah c5 and just stop it right now let's control one side so that you can focus on the other. Now that's, that is what you'll want to do. And truly, uh, if you can, focus on the minor side. There's only two pawns on each, each side. Focus on the minor side to just block it off and stop its activity because your pawn majority is over here. Um, it is, I shouldn't say pawn majority, it's a better, they're all connected. You've only got these two connected and that one's a lone pawn. So try to get going on this side. Stop this side, play over here. That's, uh, that's good stuff. And then King comes back to e6. He recognizes, okay, there is nothing more to do over here. Now, he very properly recognizes there is nothing left to do over here. And I'm at, this is so obvious, but it needs to be said anyway, just in case. And it's good refresher. For those of us who need it, me, man, that would be f that, that stupid. That throws the game away. The game is over if you worry about it. You can't save every pawn when you're down to kings and pawns and pawns on both sides. So do not think that way. Quit worrying about these pawns. That would have lost the game. He would have instantly, I mean instantly, have taken that pawn and then look what he's got. 
he's got the fast track right and there's not he can't come over here to start racing him to stop him so that would have been fatal that would have been an absolute total blunder go back this direction leave these guys alone they're out Bobby Fisher put a stop to it now I'm repeating myself but that really is a key moment in this game that's important to understand sincerely because here comes the side yeah now he puts his pawns across the best way for the defense and now Bobby will force the exchange of the F pawn yes because now now it's now it's going to be drawn Truly, and I think what, yeah, yeah, all they do is just move back and forth. Blink, 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 and they agree to a draw. But it's vital that uh, we learn some good things in this game. And I think one of the most important lessons that Silman showed in, in his book on the amateur's mind, I believe, and I believe it was the uh, section that was showing Alexander Alekin, and it was absolute mind-boggling. It just blew me away how intelligent Alekin played when uh, it got to the point to where there were pawns on two sides. Alekin just left the one side completely alone and beelined it over to one side only. No, 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 no. It, it, no, it was a Fisher. It was not Alekin. It was Fisher himself, where Fisher had learned... Just ignore the one side and go to the other because in an endgame you cannot save everything. So cramp this up and then go that way. Or vice versa. But do not uh, divide, you know, don't take your left eyeball and look over here and take your right eyeball and look over here. No. Pick one side and work on it. Fun game. Great, great game. Really cool to see how they how they, again, fought it out through the center with all of their pieces. And yes, they had some open files for a while, and uh, Black utilized his F file to get up here into the center so that he could be centralized. Uh, and then they fought through the center, and then they uh, whittled it down, and then they blocked off one side. And, 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 most importantly, I would argue, is they put their kings into this game. That is fundamental man so great information in this game for us to look we, we saw a great opening we saw some fantastic middle game play nothing really super fancy though i mean not a whole lot of you know fireworks and uh, fabulous tactics yet but just good solid strategy and these games are sometimes the most valuable games for that reason so i've talked enough thank you for watching my backyard professor chessa videos i do appreciate it you guys are wonderful have a good day be good do well have fun sleep nice be good friends with everyone. Smile. Be happy. It makes people wonder what the heck you're up to, and that is always a delight. Be good citizens of your country, and yes, I'm not kidding, I will see you in the next Backyard Professor Chess videos.